Welcome to the Windows Computer and Technology channel and uh, here are some answers to some of the questions I've seen through the past few days, actually a lot of them through the weekend, about Windows 10 22H2. And um, there are a lot of differences with Windows 10, Windows 11 22H2. So the first question that I've seen is about the stability of 22H2. Um, someone said that a tech guy that um, he knows says not to go to 22H2, has tons of problems on Windows 10, and it really doesn't. Windows 10 22H2 doesn't change anything really in the system. It updates the uh, number of the build, and that's pretty much it. So there isn't really no reason for 22H2 in Windows 10 to cause problems because it actually does not, like I said, modify or change features. Whatever it does, as Microsoft says, it involves productivity, <laughs> which they just don't say anything else. So we have no idea, and I don't think it does change much. Um itself it's so small also as an update that it can't really do much on the system so i don't think 22h2 has any issues i don't see anyone complaining more than the usual basic uh, updates for 22h2 on windows 10. Um, i think one of the things maybe to be careful is there is and uh, there are some features and things of that block uh, the blockers of windows 11 22h2 maybe um, there's a mix up and he's kind of referring more to windows 11 22h2 that uh, could technically be more of a problem since it's a bigger update but 22H2 on Windows 10 shouldn't have any issues. I've seen someone say that he's got the stuttering issue on gaming now since 22H2 on Windows 10. Once again, um, it is not something that should happen because it doesn't change anything there. It's not, once again, like 22H2 on Windows 11. One of the things that can happen, and this is something that I sometimes will tell everybody, is if you've been running your system for a long time, and on Windows 10, it's possible you've been running the same Windows 10 and upgrading it to every build since, you know, it, almost the beginning, or if not many years. Um, you know, you get to a point when you upgrade all the time to the latest builds that it's not a bad idea to actually, um, you know, do a clean install and restart from scratch. It, it does, you know, make Windows much more efficient after so many years of use. Um, I've seen people tell me, well, you know, I've never had the urge or never understood why people would have to reinstall from time to time. I've never had that problem. Actually, one of the things you need to know is that it's something that creeps up very slowly on you. So your Windows 10 might seem to work well, and if you have a powerful PC, it might still be running very well. But if you haven't done a clean install in many years, Doing one, you will notice a difference. Most people, even though it works fine, will come back and say, well, you know, it's it's actually faster. There was, you you, you know, what you were saying is is right. There There is a need from a reinstall from time to time. But often it's so slow and creeping up that we don't really notice much. And unless the PC really gets, you know, very slow, uh, most people will keep, in, in, you know, their install in, Let's face it, reinstalling Windows from scratch is a pain. Uh, so um, that that also is something that a lot of people will not do. But, you know, your system can be running still perfectly well. The uh, other question that I have is when you go to Windows 10 um, to uh, download the media creation tool on the web and want to install Windows 10, do you have a choice of what version of Windows 10 you can install and no, you don't. Microsoft does not offer you a choice. It offers you the latest version that is available, which means if you go on Windows, the, the uh, Microsoft website to have the latest, to, to have a, a Windows 10 download, you'll have 22H2. It's the only one that will be available. The image you download from the media creation tool 
and the upgrade process that you get from there pushes you to 22H2 automatically. You have no choice on that. Uh, that is why over the or years I've often said, well, if you like a specific version or if it works well for you, maybe downloading the image to keep you know, in a separate place on your hard drive somewhere as a backup in case of problems is not a bad idea. If there's something wrong, you can always use that image to go back. Um, I'm sure there are places on the internet where you can get some images with uh, older versions, but I don't recommend going most of the time to third-party websites for images. You never know what you're going to get. So uh, these are the few questions there. And like I said, 22H2 shouldn't be a problem. Um, I don't think it mess, you know, messes up on the system anything. It really is very, very, very minor. Where I might see somebody having an issue a little more could be if you're on 21H1, you move to 22H2. That move means that in the middle you had to have 21H2. Um, so when you jump, you don't jump over a version. It's just that 21H2 is installed with the 22H2 update in it. So that that is something you have to do. You know, cumulative updates and Windows updates do that. When you go and you press that update button, you see a cumulative update. It will actually want to install the cumulative updates that are missing. So if you see 22H2 and you're on 21H1, in reality, what happens is that it's installing 21H2 and then the small 22H2 update on it. That could be a little more problematic because 21H2 did add a few features and did tweak the system a little more. So that could be the transition going up to the 21H2 and 22H2 that causes an issue. But if you're on 21H2, 22H2 is, like I said, so minor that um, I don't think it really should cause any problems in general uh, in Windows. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.